JK Rowling has inserted herself into the lives of millions of kids and adults all around the globe through her beloved Harry Potter. Now she's gotten to her fame through ambition and stubbornness, but those traits can sometimes prove to be quite negative. Now she's become infamous in the past few years because of her opinions and stances on social topics. Can she once again become beloved? Most of us know Rowling as the richest writer in the world, her fortune being around a billion dollars. But before winning the lottery in the form of a book series, she actually had very little. After graduating from the University of Exeter in 1986, she started working for Amnesty International in London. Now this is where she began laying down the foundations for the story of Harry Potter, the boy who lives in the cupboard beneath the stairs. In the early 1990s, she left for Portugal where she taught English as a foreign language. It was then that she had a brief marriage and a daughter, which was why she decided to return to the United Kingdom and settle down in Edinburgh. Now they didn't have much, they lived off the money that she got while working periodically as a French teacher and the money they got from the government in the form of public assistance. After completing the first novel, she decided to try her luck with multiple publishing houses. Unfortunately for them, they all decided that Rowland's story was a waste of both time and resources. Only after 12 different houses rejected her did Bloomsbury decide to take a chance on her and her story. Now this proved to be the best decision they ever made since Harry Potter as a franchise has amassed over $34.5 billion, making it one of the highest grossing franchises ever created. From movies to parks, there ain't no escaping from the wizarding world. Now we can all see the appeal of the wizarding world. Most of us come in contact with the series as kids, either through the movies or the books. Maybe it was the first time we encountered the fantasy genre. Now it opened a whole new world to a bunch of people, one where anything and everything was possible. Even as adults, there's still a lot of people who enjoy the exact same media that they enjoyed as kids, and they don't plan on letting that world go anytime soon. Because of their love for the boy who lived and all those that they met throughout his journey, they felt a sort of gratefulness for the writer. After all, she was the one who made it all possible. Now, this appreciation came to a screeching halt when Rowling voiced some of her more controversial opinions. She came under fire in June of 2020 after she posted a tweet in which she had an issue with the fact that a post hadn't used the word women. Her post read, People who menstruate. I'm sure there used to be a word for these people. Someone help me out. Uh, Wombin, Wimpond, Woolmud. Now, it ain't exactly a surprise that this caused so much outrage. Not only did the fans turn on her, but the actors from the screen adaptation as well. Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, and Rupert Grint, all three having been part of the Golden Trio, expressed their disappointment and spoke out against the author. It's rather unfortunate that instead of taking back her statement and apologizing, even if it was only to maintain her image in the public eye, Rowling went into even more detail when it came to her stance on trans issues. She states that she loves and respects trans people, but then immediately goes on to deny their experiences. She also explained that she had become interested in trans issues while researching a character that she's writing, and she outlined five reasons for being worried about the new trans activism. Well, that's certainly a fantastic way to make a large portion of your fans hate you. Now, if that was her goal to create as much outrage as she could in a short period of time, we're pretty sure that she's satisfied with her success. But maybe all this public outrage wasn't enough for her. On September 14, 2020, her book Trouble Blood poured gasoline on an already raging fire. Y'all can imagine the shock and disbelief of her fans when they found out the book follows a detective on the hunt for a cis male serial killer who disguises himself as a female to hunt down and murder cis women. Now, it's almost way too hard to believe that somebody would actually go out of their way to destroy their career, but nothing seems to be impossible for this fantasy writer. Her fans, or should I say former fans, went as far as to declare her dead with the hashtag RIPJKRawling trending on Twitter. Now, if y'all enjoying the video so far, then leave a like and subscribe for more content just like this. The controversy also strained her relationship with Warner Brothers, the studio behind the film adaptation. Now, there was plans for a series reboot in the form of a TV series, but seeing as multiple years had passed without any information, it would seem that Rawlings' outspokenness has prevented her from having another source of income inside the ever-growing wizarding world. 
The lack of diversity in the Harry Potter books suggests that her closed-mindedness runs pretty deep. Now, there's been hundreds of characters introduced throughout the seven books, but only a handful of non-white characters are present. In fact, all the main characters are white as well as all the professors, too. And when she does introduce a character of another race besides white, she decides to give them names like Cho Chang and the Patel Twins for people of Asian descent. Another interesting name is Kingsley Shacklebolt for a character described to be of a darker skin tone. Really? I mean, really? Like, it's actually pretty incredible that it even got printed, seeing as the word shackle is a part of the character's name. Now, there's also one non-straight person inside the whole series, that being Albus Dumbledore, which was only explored in the final book and not even directly. During filming of the final film, Rowling told the director to cut out a scene of Dumbledore telling Harry about a girl that he loved. Now, it seems to have been an afterthought for our beloved writer. If y'all haven't been convinced that Rowling's a woman of more, let's say, traditional values, you only gotta look to the books for confirmation. Stereotypes and gender norms run rampant, as seen in her depiction of women as mostly caregivers. Now, thankfully, some women in the books actually have other personality traits besides taking care of other people and kids. Her stereotypical view of the world can also be seen in her depiction of dumb ruffians who always got a larger build. Even if the larger character's nice, they still depict it as being stupid. Now, this is just sad, considering that these books are meant for kids that are all different. I mean, we can only imagine how hard it is to read about people who look at you like you always being described as idiots. I mean, that's if you can even find anybody who looks like you at all, considering the lack of diversity here. But y'all know what they say. If you got nothing nice to say, then don't say nothing at all. Maybe that author simply just didn't get the memo? Now, maybe her lack of inclusivity in the books did plant the seeds for fans of the series to start writing fan work, also known as fan fiction, which largely contributed to the popularity of the franchise. Even if you didn't feel included in the Wizard and World, I mean, you could always just insert yourself, either through writing your own work or reading somebody else's. There's a pretty strong case to be made that the reason for Rowling's downfall really was also the reason for her rise to fame. But here's the deal, man. We should all learn from her mistakes. I mean, especially if you're already a person of importance or interest in the world. And sometimes maybe, just maybe, keep your opinions to yourself, especially when you know they're going against the views of the masses. I mean, of course, you could also just take the JK Rowling route, voice everything you think out loud, and lose much of what you had or could have. In other words, man, think before you speak. So what are your thoughts on the JK Rowling paradox? Make sure you let me know in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.